Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for round number 3 of our F1 2015 career mode here with Carlos Sainz and today we are here in China for of course round 3. This is probably going to be a difficult race given the, the long, long, long straight here in China and the Renault power unit. I asked you guys for 50 likes though on the Malaysia episode and you guys did it. Within 12 hours, so that was a bit mad. Um, so again, if we could smash 50 likes, that'd be absolutely awesome. You can see the strategy we are aiming for in the background, a two-stop. But before we get into the race, it's time for the qualifying report. For the first time this season, Williams topped the timing sheets in qualifying. This time in Q1, as Ferrari and Mercedes chose to use primes. It would be a disappointing day for Lotus, only managing 15th and 17th on the grid, with McLaren only able to salvage 16th and 18th. Normal service was resumed in Q2, as Lewis Hamilton was fastest from the two Ferraris. Carlos Sainz and Nico Hülkenberg just managed to make it through to Q3, as Max Verstappen just missed out. Sergio Perez also took his best qualifying of the season, with 13th. But in Q3 it would be Nico Rosberg who would take pole from his teammate Lewis Hamilton. The two Ferraris took 3rd and 4th in front of the two Williamses, with Danny Kvyat taking 9th and a top 10 finish for the first time this season. So reading up from 10th place, Carlos Sainz Jr and Daniel Kvyat would occupy the 5th row of the grid with Nico Hülkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo in 8th and 7th respectively. Then it's the two Williams on row 3 with the two Ferraris on row 2, but it's Nico Rosberg to take pole from Lewis Hamilton for the Chinese Grand Prix. So it is 10th on the grid today here in China for Carlos Sainz Jr. The five lights are now on and we are underway for the Chinese Grand Prix. It's Daniel Kafia in front of us in the Red Bull and surprisingly it seems like a decent start. It's a good start for Verstappen, our Toro Rosso teammate behind us against Nazari Dive up the inside of Kafia down into turn one. We're alongside the Red Bull driver. In front of us is the other Red Bull of Ricardo alongside Hulkenberg. They're battling. We're going to try and get superior traction to the Russian Kafia on our inside round the outside for turn two. And we just just about made it stick, just about chopping the front wing there off Daniel Kvyat and Hülkenberg and Ricardo still alongside each other, Force India sparking there as we run down towards, I do believe it's turn three, maybe turn four, we run a little bit wide and Kvyat thinks about making another move back up the inside of us for ninth place, we just about hold on, it's a position game then off the line and it's Nico Hülkenberg who has to back out in, uh, sorry, behind Daniel Ricardo as we go through these quick rights and lefts and now as we saw sort of in this second sector, coming towards the end of the second sector and the start of the third sector, it has been a pretty good start for the Spaniard here, Carlos Sainz, in the Toro Rosso. And uh, after a pretty decent first two races, of course, fifth in Australia, and then another very good result in Malaysia after a bit of a boring race, let's be honest. But still, we'll be hoping that this one is a little bit more action-packed. Let's hope that is the case. Uh, with this long straight, of course, we've got in China a huge opportunity for overtaking, and we now enter that after the snail section. Unfortunately, though, we are in a Toro Rosso, Renault-powered, so without DRS, it's going to be fairly difficult for us to make a move on any Mercedes-powered cars. As you can see, though, we're bearing down the Hulk and Bear. We've gone to the inside. We're alongside. We've broken... We've we've we braked, broken even, very, very late. And that's allowed Hülkenberg to get the switchback manoeuvre. We go off the track there slightly, and Hülkenberg will just, I think, hang in around the outside uh, through the last corner. So we lose out in the end to Nico Hülkenberg. And now moving on to lap four, having done three laps in qualifying on this set of tyres, they're starting to go off already of these options, and Daniel Kvyat has breezed around the outside of us in the uh, the sort of father car, if you like, in the, in the big... The big brother car in the in the Red Bull, and we we've dropped down to tenth place, sitting just in front of the Brazilian Felipe Nasa in his Sauber. Now moving on to lap four, and the under the understeer is killing us. Now we've got no grip on these tyres whatsoever. They're already going off cataclysmically, and Felipe Nasa and the Sauber's gone through. Max Verstappen, our teammate, is bearing down on us as well as we go down to the hairpin at the end of the back straight. We actually look back up the inside of Felipe Nasa, who's cautious there. There's a bit of contact. Carlos Sainz Jr. out of shape there, and Verstappen and Perez behind will be looking to try and sort of pounce on that opportunity. They can't in the end, but Felipe Nasa is up into 10th, and now Sainz is out of the points, but Max Verstappen with the assistance of DRS will be trying to bear down on his teammate here. Carlos Sainz has got 
got DRS 2, but look at this, that's Sergio Perez trying to go to the inside of both of us. He's got past Max Verstappen as they go down to turn one, but Carlos Sainz goes wide, and that's allowed both Verstappen and Perez at the inside. Verstappen, the meat in this sandwich, and he's spun, he's half spun. There wasn't enough space for him, and Max Verstappen spins off. He's not lost too much time, but here's a replay on board with Max Verstappen. This is from Felipe Nazza uh, passing Carlos Sainz. You can see Carlos Sainz is about to look back up the inside of Felipe Nazar as we're on board here with Max Verstappen. There's a little bit of contact that allows Nazar to get away and it sort of throws Sainz out of shape. But obviously, Verstappen is now going to get the DRS on his teammate. Unbeknownst to him, the guy behind him, Sergio Perez, is also going to get DRS. And in that Mercedes-powered car, is going to breeze up to the back of Verstappen and make a move. Here he comes up the inside in the Force India. So he makes the move into Turn 1. Carlos Sainz goes way too wide. And now Verstappen and Perez are both up the inside of the Spaniard. But the door is going to close. The pincer effect comes into play. And Max Verstappen ends up spinning off into the infield. So that's time lost for Verstappen. In the meantime, Sergio Perez is now completing the move before we even get to the DRS line on Carlos Sainz who is falling through the field like a stone now down into 12th place that will briefly become 13th as Max Verstappen tries to go around the outside of his teammate who locks up there Marcus Ericsson the two Lotuses and the two McLarens now queuing up Carlos Sainz one of the slowest cars now out on the track apart from the Manners perhaps and uh, now moving on to lap 6 it is time to come into the pit lane this will be a struggle now to make it a two, a two stop strategy because obviously as we saw before on the grid, we're aiming for a two-stop, two option stints and a prime stint. That just doesn't look as if it's going to happen as we move into our pit box. So if you're stuck on a set of primes, that just allows us to sort of change the strategy as we're on the go. So now we can do two prime stints if we wanted to. If we'd have stuck on another set of options, it would have severely limited our, our sort of strategic changes um, to either a three-stop or just having to go with the strategy we'd set already. Uh, as you can see, though, on a fresh set of boots on these option tyres, we're lunging at the inside of Roberto Merrier. Now, at the end of that lap, now starting lap 9, we're going to move past a few cars, including our teammate Max Verstappen uh, and just about Sergio Perez in the Force India. So we've gained that position back on the Force India driver who passed us a few laps ago. Roman Grosjean also came in on the same lap as us in the Lotus. So he's behind us now as well. So we're in a net 13th, I think, at the moment, but I think there's still a few people left to pit as we pass Will Stevens in a lovely move around the outside there for P13 around the outside of the, uh, the manor driver through the middle of sector 2 now up into 11th place as Alonso and I think it was Ericsson pit uh, on board with Ericsson's teammate though this is Felipe Nazza having an absolutely fantastic battle at the moment with Daniel Kvyat doesn't appear to be too happy with the driving there of Kvyat does Felipe Nazza but coming through the final corner bearing in mind these are actually the two guys in front of Carlos Sainz on the track at the moment these guys are battling for 9th and 10th with Carlos Sainz in 11th but as you can see Felipe Nazza bearing up to the back of Daniel Kvyat and down in to turn one. I think he's just about going to make this move stick, but look how close they are. Absolutely astonishing driving from both of the youngsters, but Felipe Nazar does just about hold on in the end. As you can see, they're moving on to lap 13. Roman Grosjean, who's on the option tyres, uh, we came in for primes, but everyone else around us has gone onto options, so we are going to be you know, obviously slower than everyone else. And Roman Grosjean's just breezed past us there in the Lotus, quicker in a straight line. As you can see, they're getting very, very close to the back of Grosjean. I think actually making a little bit of contact, but with superior traction, he manages to get out of the corner in front of us as well and take 11th place. And then Grosjean flies into the pit lane. So it looks as if he's going for a three-stopper. So I think he's certainly someone we need to battle with in this race. I think he's, he's a target in this race because it looks as if he'll probably be on the same strategy as us. Meanwhile, Max Verstappen, our teammate, he's on options as well. Uh, as, and he's going to breeze past us on the primes. Now on board with Sergio Perez. He's got a bird's eye view of the two Toro Rosso cars battling. And now Sainz actually looking up the inside of, si of uh, Verstappen, his teammate there. Now these three guys have obviously already had huge amounts of battling already in this race. And it led to Verstappen spinning. Verstappen and Sainz still battling. Verstappen goes up the inside through the last corner as Perez dives into the pit lane. But that's allowed Sainz to get the DRS. And he's going to go try and go around the outside as we start lap 16. He's even on the radio at the same time talk about multitasking he goes right around the outside but goes a little bit wide that will allow Verstappen back up the inside to take 10th place can Sainz just try and keep it around the outside he can't Verstappen eases him out wide and it's a fantastic move from the Dutchman now moving on to lap 17 and Carlos Sainz is going to be coming in for a second pit stop it, it doesn't look as if we're going to be able to stretch another set of primes to the end so what we're going to do is we're going to go for two option stints to end this race that's a three stopper so we've converted from the two stopper that the team wanted us to do do I imagine a slower three stopper otherwise they would have suggested that to us at the start of the race so we're gonna have to like make hay while the sun is shining on these option tires because 
Otherwise, we're going to struggle massively. As you can see, a few cars coming into the pit lane there, including our teammate Verstappen. But meanwhile, we've got our sights set on the Lotus here of Pastor Maldonado, who's on a old set of option tyres. I do believe he's coming in soon. But the issue is here, we've managed to catch Maldonado and Perez in a difficult part of the track to overtake. And now when we come to the straight, they're both in Mercedes-powered cars. And with our Renault-powered car, it's going to be extremely difficult to make a move. We have, however, with superior grip and traction, managed to undercut Pastor Maldonado going through the snail section. But as you can see, the Lotus is just going to drive straight back through. He didn't even have the DRS open at that point, And he just drives straight back through again. So this is going to be very, very difficult. And it's really hurting our chances of making moves through the order. Now onto lap 19. And we're still with Pastor Maldonado. But I think we're just going to literally drive around the outside. Around the outside through turn 1. Showing off that superior grip on the new tyres. And that is Maldonado dispatched. As you can see, we're now bearing down on Perez, and with a little bit of force through the snail section, we managed to move up into 11th, but I think we're going to have the same problem here with the Force India, because Perez is going to be faster in a straight line. We flick up into rich fuel mixture, but even with the DRS, and even with Perez not having the DRS, he's bearing down on us and trying to go around the outside. We should be able to hold on, though, on the inside. Uh, Perez not having DRS really saving us there, and we've managed to move up into 11th place. These guys also on three-stop strategies as well, so that's definitely for a net position. As you can see, onto lap 21, we move up into P10 as Nico Hulkenberg pits last time onto a set of primes. Meanwhile, now it's lap 23 and it's time for us to come in for our third and final pit stop onto yet another set of options. Now, this is where we're going to have a huge, and I mean huge, pace advantage over absolutely everyone because we're now on a new set of option tyres and everyone else in the field is on primes. Not just primes, but slightly aging primes because they all came in about three or four laps ago. So they're primes that aren't in their... Oh, I was going to say in their, aren't in their prime, but that's just a terrible joke. You've probably heard it multiple times from me and for, from everyone else. That's beyond the point, though, because now onto the back straight on lap 24, we came out of the pit lane in 15th, which means it's going to be very, very difficult to get points. Uh, if you could see on the minimap a moment ago, the yellow dot, that is Max Verstappen. He's the man in 10th. That's the guy we're aiming for in order to score points and salvage anything from this race, which has really hurt us massively in terms of tyre wear. We've managed to dispatch Marcus Ericsson down into the hairpin at the end of the back straight. Oh, now we're just driving up the inside, literally, of Jensen Button in the McLaren. Again, superior grip, superior pace on these option tyres against Button's completely gone off primes. And now we're up into 13th, onto the penultimate lap of the race. We've now got Roman Gros in exactly the same situation and we're going to pull off exactly the same move on the Frenchman and now it is only two cars remaining we just got to try and catch Hulkenberg and Verstappen before the end of this race pass them and we'll be in the points they're only about three seconds up the road but we're not lapping three or four seconds quicker than them we're lapping about sort of two and a half seconds a lap quicker than them which isn't we're going to run out of laps basically we've got a 4.4 second gap up to Hulkenberg and as you can see on the final lap of the race, Lewis Hamilton has already won the race for Mercedes. We are catching Hulkenberg and Verstappen at a heck of a rate of knots, but it's just not fast enough. One more lap, and I think we probably would have done this, but unfortunately, the tyre wear in that first stint has massively hurt us. Not being able to, basically, not being able to keep up with Hulkenberg and Nazar and the such like, and Kafia in that first stint. Once we dropped about 7 or 8 seconds to them, there was pretty much no hope from the rest of the race unless we could stretch out those primes. And the way this game functions with the, the fact you can get tyre punctures from stretching the tyres too long, I didn't want to risk that. So we ended up going with the two options uh, sort of stints at the end. It hasn't really... Well, it has paid off in the sense that we've managed to get some action. I managed to get back up into 12th place. But it hasn't paid off in the sense we're not going to get any points. Nico Hulkenberg was actually catching our teammate Verstappen there at a heck of a rate of knots as well for 10th place. He hasn't, he hasn't been able to pass him. He's run out of laps as well. Verstappen takes the final points paying position and we come across the line to take a slightly disappointing 12th, but we're in a Toro Rosso. Let's be honest, we're not going to score points every single round. We've taken 5th and 7th in the first two races. We can only manage 12th in this one, but it's still a pretty decent performance on tyres that were dead for the majority of the race. That first option stint killed us completely. And the second pro and the prime stint as well, the second stint was pretty pretty damn disgusting as well. In the meantime, Lewis Hamilton has taken the win from Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari and Nico Rosberg in the second of the Mercedes. It's Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel fourth and fifth with Massa, Ricardo, Daniel Kafiat, Felipe Nasser and Max Verstappen rounding out the points. That's what I'm saying with Kafiat and Nasser because they were sort of ninth and tenth or sort of eighth and ninth even. If we had just managed to keep with them in that first stint, we probably would have made the three stopper work and get some points. We would have been able to catch. Hulkenberg and Verstappen in that final stint and we would have got some points. In the meantime this is how 
Now, that's how that race affects the driver standings. Kimi Raikkonen still on top by just one point from the winner in China, Lewis Hamilton. It's then Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg third, third and fourth. From Ricardo, Bottas, Massa, ourselves, Sainz there in eighth. And then Verstappen and Felipe Nasa rounding out the top ten. So still, Carlos Sainz doing an absolutely fantastic job there in eighth in the driver standings. And here are the constructor standings after that Chinese Grand Prix. Ferrari still out on top there from Mercedes, Williams, Red Bull, Toro Rosso, and I think then Sauber, and then Force India and Lotus each on one point. But I hope you've enjoyed this race. It was a very hectic Chinese Grand Prix, especially in comparison to the Malaysian Grand Prix last time out. If you could smash the like button, that would be massively appreciated. 50 likes again would be absolutely awesome. Subscribe if you're new around here for new F1 2015 content, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today after such a good race. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.